Hey everybody, Adam Tereska, Adam Tereska Videos. I'm at the Memorial Cemetery in Texas City, Texas. And I'm here to visit the mass grave of those who were killed in the April 16th, 1947 ammonium nitrate disaster that happened here in Texas City. Because of the fact they were unable to identify the parts of the bodies of those who were deceased after that explosion, they were put into a mass grave and they are here at this location. So come along, join me as we go to check out this beautiful facility and this beautiful tribute to the unidentified who were killed in the April 16, 1947 disaster. Starting off with this front view, you see the plants that they have put here at the opening to the Memorial Cemetery, Texas City, opened up in 1947. And you can see the beautiful brickwork signed for Memorial Park. And this anchor, what a story this is. 3,200 pounds. came off the SS Grand Camp on April 16, 1947 when its cargo of ammonium nitrate fertilizer caught fire and then while making attempts to put out the fire the ship exploded. This 3,200 pound anchor was sent 1.62 miles from the explosion or 8,575 linear feet. To say that that would have taken an enormous explosion would be a gross understatement. Over here, we have a plaque of the people who lost their lives, who touched from the, were touched from the cities of Grand Camp and Nantes, France, located near the beaches of Normandy in the disaster in 1947. I'll get a close up and I'll do a panoramic for you. I don't want to get too close. I don't want to lose any of it. I'm going to go down nice and slow. You can pause it as necessary to read it. If you can't read it, let me know in the comments and what I will do is I will come back and I will in fact what I'll do is I'll just do it now I'll zoom in a little bit more that would have been the crew from how I understand it yes it is a crew and then, on May 12, 1998, French delegation, people listed below, those were the people who came over in 1998 in the memory of those who lost their lives in 1947. Now, on the back side of this wall, we have challengers, partners, tributes, among others. We got out of zoom here. I'll pan down each one for you so you can read them all. Those were the challengers. These are the partners. The beauty of this park has been enhanced by the foliage and trees donated by the following.
Again, these are in the category of the partners. Over here, I'm going to have to pan up and down a few times, but these are the tributes to the friends and loved ones for the following who donated to create this beautiful park in Memorial. I'll try to do three rows at a time here because there's several, there's several groups. three. And these, this pillar through here. Just in case these didn't show up. We're going to see how well these show up. I can't guarantee how well they're going to come through because of this coloration. But I'll try to do one row at a time. I'll focus in enough. These are the individuals who lost their lives in the explosions and the families of those who perished. I'll go real slow with it. Row one. I know they're hard to read, they're hard to read just looking at them myself, so I know they're hard to read for you guys, but I'm doing the best I can with how the placard is discolored and I'd like to put light color on them, but I don't want to be arrested or get in trouble for vandalizing when I'm not trying to vandalize, I'm trying to make them more readable. So that's why I'm not doing anything other than filming. This is row three. And finally row four. Again, these are those who lost their lives or family members of those who lost their lives and may not have been identified because they couldn't identify him back in 1947. And I apologize for the traffic noise. I'm by one of the main streets here in Texas City, which is 25th Street. And that would be the tribute. That'd be one set of tribute. Looks like we have another one over here. This one will be a little easier to read. In honor of these individuals who lost their lives in the explosions and their families. This is the second of three placards for this. When you read these, please say their names and let them know that they're remembered and let them know you care. May God rest their souls.
Okay. This is the third plaque of those individuals who lost their lives in the explosions and their families. Once again, I'm going to give each row their own focus point. And of course we have the Memorial Park placard. If need be, you can pause that to read it. Benches. I think every single bench in here has some kind of a memorial on it. And there's even a little historical marker here we're going to check out. Painting down and let you guys read it. You can pause as necessary to read it. And then there's pictures in that time frame. It says there are 2,300 tons of ammonium nitrate were aboard the grain camp. Coming to panel number two. Get as much of the glare out of it as I can for you. As you can see by the reading on this, the repercussions were enormous. 
I am 40 miles away from Houston and they were able to feel it in Louisiana, 250 miles away. There's a, a picture of the explosion. Look at all those cars. Employees' cars that were at that Monsanto Chemical Company parking lot. And now it resembles a, de a demolition derby and a junkyard. When they were able to feel the blast 250 miles away in Louisiana, you knew this is one hell of an explosion. We come over to panel number three, we discuss the second explosion. Well, the ship called the High Flyer. I'll try to side pan each paragraph for you guys so you can read it. Again, you can always pause this as necessary. And again, I apologize for any glare, but unfortunately, uh, being the way it is, I didn't want it to be too hot when I came over here, and I didn't want my camera to overheat, but there's a lot to cover. You see there... Wilson B. Keen. Another close up of all that remained of the Wilson B. Keen. And this is a real good one here. Let me make sure I'm not zoomed in all the way and make sure. This one explains pretty much everything. I will pan side to side so you can make sure we don't miss any of them. Basically tells you everything where what was where, what blew up. The devastation was ungodly. We go to panel number four. Can't do anything about the glare. I'll do the best I can filming for you, though. As I said, Monsanto parking lot looked like a demolition derby in a junkyard. With the way cars are thrown about all over each other. 500 homes and businesses were so badly damaged they could no longer be occupied.
I do believe this building here was rebuilt and repaired because I believe that's down on 6th Street in town. And then you have this, the framework of what was a fire engine. That's a view looking towards the south with the destruction of the Monsanto plant in the right portion of the photograph. Which would be right about here. You can see the ship, the Longhorn, right there. 200 feet inland. Unreal. And then you got the remains of the Monsanto building. And the remains of a grain elevator and railroad shed. Next panel. I'll try to pan side to side for each paragraph for you so you can read it. If I step back too far, it won't be legible. And again, I'm sorry about the glare. It's just the nature of the beast. I, with the weather, uh, daylight and everything else, I can't do anything about that at this point in time. You see the rescue efforts beginning. People being hauled out. This will be a little easier to read. W.H. Swede Sandberg, Vice President of Texas 30 Terminal. And I got an ambulance driving past. That's what you hear in the background. And we got our next board here. pictures And here we have 
the 27 firemen who were killed. This is a Those were the firefighters that were killed. We come to the next board. Maybe you can see the whole thing that way. And here we have a thing on Memorial Park. And this will bring us back to the original flood. A little monument over here. That there's a few monuments. I hope the lights come on soon. I'd love to see this lit up. Because they have lights in various different places. Memorial Park is probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to, and yet it's so sad. Servicemen from Texas City, World War I, Korean conflict, the Vietnam conflict, unfortunately the Persian Gulf had no war casualties. On this plaque, more who were killed in the line of duty. I'll get all their names in. I want to make sure their names are in completely. Sorry for the zooming in and out. But it's something that needs to be done. Another list of members of the Texas City Volunteer Fire Department who lost their lives in the disaster of April 16, 1947. This comes out nicer than the other one that easier to read. Now on this side, World War II servicemen who were killed from Texas City. They needed their own placard. Okay, now this is a little too monochromatic to really come up on the screen very well, so I'm going to read this one out loud to you guys. 
and it says, War and Peace, in solemn remembrance of the achievements of our sons and daughters, and in humble tribute to their sacrifices for their country, and as a symbol of hope for the future of peace and democracy among all nations, September 28, 1991. Absolutely beautiful. Benches to sit on for reminiscing, for remembrance, for honoring. This is the area of those who are not identified who were laid to rest in Texas City, Texas, at the Memorial Park Cemetery. Once again, I'm hoping they turn the lights on in here because I would really like to see this lit up. I'm going to go over to the fountain and see how the fountain looks today. You can see it. it's absolutely beautiful here. Very tranquil, calming, at peace. Even in the feeling of the unidentified who lost their lives in that April 16th, 1947 disaster. For survivors and those who pay tribute to those who lost their lives and built this beautiful facility, I say thank you. To say they did a phenomenal job doesn't do them justice. There's another monument. Perhaps that of a widow of a lost soul. Grief. Looks like a poem. Oh, it's a symbol. It's the name of the statues which I'm standing by. Blackens to be a little easier to read. Okay. Courtesy of the Texas City Lions Club in memoriam, April 16th, 1947. Lion Frederick, I. Luttonman, Lion Warren May Jr. Hold on.
put a little light on the subject here. Again, Lane, Frederick, I, Lutman, Lion Warren Mays Jr. Lion Basil Meredith Stewart. Lion James H. Tadlock. Lion William Al P. Chancy Boyles, June 1952. Oh, now this is a site for sore eyes. This beautiful fountain. Perhaps to cleanse the souls of the deceased as they reach up into heaven. This placard says it all. They had to number them because they couldn't come up with identities. On the bench, living memory of Dwayne and Sheila Barser. Forever in our hearts. God bless. Chlorine is strong in that fountain, I will say that much. But it's still a beautiful tribute. more items to look at here before we head out. In loving memory of Lydia A. Ramirez, October 18, 1951, died December 14, 2015. Rest in peace. What have we got here? Dedicated April 10, 2007. Hmm, April 10th, my wife's birthday. Yes, I remember. To the memory of their sons and daughters, our sisters and brothers, and the hearts remembers always. The compassionate friends of Galveston County, Texas.
And here we have three kids playing together. I'll hold that there so you can read it. Move to the next one. Beautiful things on each and every one of them. A little hard to read that one, but it was a beautiful saying. out there so you can read it. Beautiful. This bench says we get out the the compassionate friends. I like that saying. Compassionate friends. Now this is precious, a boy and his puppy. Looks like a pit bull, my favorite kind of dog. Loving and friendly, unconditional. I still miss my two puppies to this day. Rescued them from death. They lived a full life, and yet I miss them still. More beautiful benches to sit at. And let me turn my thing here. Beautiful scriptures. The 29th Street side of the Memorial Park for those who perished in 1947. They covered everybody. Those they could identify and those they could not. Being my first time here, I didn't know what to expect. 
and even though I've only been here since the 1st of July, I feel a connection. How I can't explain. But I do. I guess it's Texas growing into me because even though I've only been here for a couple months, as I mentioned, I feel a connection, I feel a presence. That, that even goes as far as to say, I almost feel like somebody's trying to contact me and reach out to me. I don't know though, it could be nothing, and it could be something very special, very important. Possibility of maybe somebody wanting to be identified. And I feel it in my part, in my heart. I feel it on my part and as sad as it is, and it's still a beautiful location honoring those who passed away as well as those who served in World War One, World War Two, the Korean conflicts. It's sad yet peaceful. I don't know if that sounds strange to you, but it makes sense to me. Don't know why, but it does. But it's dark out now. Time for me to get out of here. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Adam Tereska, Adam Tereska Videos, and I will see you in the next one.